Welcome back to another episode of the Big Ass Cornhole Podcast. Yeah, yeah. Sean and Dana with you. What's up? What's going on, man? Not too much. You know, a little week off. Had a, a lovely 4th of July weekend celebrating America and ready to get back to it. Yeah. Back from a week of vacation. Yeah. You look um, tan. Thanks, man. Look at you. Look at you. Nice and brick red. Yeah, brick red. Irish um, doesn't tan. Of course, every time I come back from vacation, I get sick, so... A little under the weather, but I'm playing hurt, so we're good to go. Lovely. All right. Well, um, let's do something that's going to fix my cold. Is that, okay. Would that be drinking beer? Yeah, let's not break tradition. Yeah. All right. Okay. Tell the folks what we're sipping on tonight in a segment we call, What You Drinking? <laughs> what You Drinking? Hey, we're bringing it back to Fathead's Brewery. You already cracked it. Cheater. Sorry. It's thirsty. It's thirsty. It's a little hot in here today. It is. But hey. So if you hear any feedback, it's just this giant fan that we have next to us because it's literally like 90 degrees yeah, up in our Yeah, I forgot to open studio. up the door to, to cool us off, and it's hot as balls. But anyways, anyways um, Ibusiv from Fatheads Brewing, right here, local to us, literally five minutes up the road. They do not make a bad beer. They don't. I, yeah. I have yet to find one. And they're yeah. not lying. This thing is... Hoppy. Hoppy as yeah. hell. It's Ibus or... In the 90s. Yeah. Um, but hey, I love a good hop. I love a little bitter beer. Yep. Uh, 7.5%. Comes in a beautiful uh, four pack of pounders. Can't beat it. Um, nope. It's delightful cold. It is. And it says, chill out, man. Have a beer. I'd be Yusuf from Fatheads Brewing. That's brought to us by our friends at Colorado Cornhole Connection. Sure is. You need some badass boards, need some score towers, hit up iHeartCornhole.com. Use code BIGASS10. Get yourself 10% off. We have, we have one more shout-out, too. Let's just get out of the way. We're hanging some badass T-shirts behind us. Be on the lookout this Thursday. Bag World Ooh. Company. All right? Beautiful apparel. Very, very comfortable. They have cool shirts. They have standard shirts. They have shirts for your wives. That one says Bag Wife. It says, live in life one drink at a time. So and they're comfortable. Out. Dude, they're so comfortable. They're soft. Yeah, it is It is a very, very well-made shirt. Yeah. So, so shout out to Bag World. Yeah. Thank you for the stuff. Um, like I said, it launches uh, this Thursday, which is, what, the 9th? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 9th, I think. Or 8th. 8th or 9th? Yeah, 8th. One of those days One in, of those in days. July, but you know, right. look out in the Facebook world. Numbers. Give, give them a like. Buy some stuff. Bag World Company. Fantastic. Well, Cornhole family, we obviously have more audio gold planned for you all today. We're going to recap all the action from this weekend's ACL events. We're going to be reviewing Warrior Bags, made by Epic Cornhole. We have C3 Bag Sasquatch, and 724 Bagger Company, WMD. Boom. Okay. Weapon of mass destruction. Now, we originally had planned, and we had even posted this morning, that we were supposed to have ACL Pro... Mike Harvey on the show. Unfortunately, like myself, he's a little under the weather, so we're going to reschedule that for a few episodes down the road, but we're definitely going to have him on. So we wish Mike Harvey well and hope he gets better soon. Yeah. He said he had no voice. I'm like, you can't do a podcast without voice. I think it was a, f- little, a few too many shoulder shimmies. Absolutely. Walking back and forth broke up that phlegm. It's all right. Absolutely. All right, but before we jump into all of our action, okay, we bring you what's going on in our cornhole lives in a segment we call In and Around the Hole. Brought to you by Airwolf Athletics, helping athletes become the alpha in all aspects of life. Get yourself some sexy drip at airwolfathletics.com. Use code BIGASK and get yourself 10% off. At this point in your cornhole life, if you haven't added a set of the sexiest bags around, you're doing something wrong. That's right, folks. Blackjack cornhole bags. You get free shipping, amazing customer service. is really a no-brainer, so stop what you're doing and go grab your gear from blackjackcornhole.com. Code BIGASP will save you 10%. All right. Did yeah. you get a chance to throw it all? I know you. Do you guys typically have like a little family Fourth of July cornhole? We did. Tournament, we right? had a we had a fun family Fourth of July cornhole tournament. We did backyard rules okay. to try to level the playing field. Um, it didn't work. I was uh, <laughs> I dominated pretty much the whole tournament lefty, and uh, yeah, it was fun though. I mean. Okay. First time everyone got to throw like pro bags on pro boards. I was gonna say, did you bring bags up? I brought, I brought eight sets of bags. What'd you bring? uh, So let's see, I brought Bag Daddy crossover. I brought local, local outlaws. I brought local bandits. I brought 
Uh, of course, some pro advantages. I brought. Oh lord, what else did I bring? Uh, fire controls. Okay. Um, local four fifties. Okay. And then. Did you? Did, were the fire starters still up there for when we hit them and uh, when we were up at the Erie Open? No, we found all okay. of those. Tony <laughs> Rinaldi. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Um, but yeah, so it was uh, it was fun to get like I started. Everyone started learning the flat toss and stuff eventually, oh, yeah. seeing how I was throwing and. Uh, some of them got pretty good. Um, it, it just reminded me of how far we've come in the cornhole world. Do you still find it fun when the level of competition's not that good? Absolutely, because you? yeah, you do dumb shit like throw lefty, or if their first two bags are off the off the board, get, I'm just going airmail. Yeah, that's and just you yeah. know just just messing around, practicing shots and stuff. And like, I mean, I'm not trying to sound like an arrogant dick or anything. No, like, I get by it. By saying that, like I dominated, but. I mean, it's like. I mean, if you put three bags on the board, you're gonna exactly. Dominate, you're scoring. Yeah. You're scoring two points okay. usually against my family. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was still a lot of fun. Like everyone had a blast. We followed that up with the euchre tournament. Okay. Which I also took down, Ooh. and then uh, closed out the night with a beer pong tournament, which trifecta. Wow. Dominant. So, uh, pretty successful weekend. Dude, yeah. I, wow. I will say beer pong. Everyone up there is good. I dominated the championship game. Eight straight shots closed it out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was a great performance. I have. When it comes to throwing cornhole bags, I basically did not do shit on vacation. <laughs> um, I packed. I had packed boards. I even brought three sets of bags. Did not. Get, I didn't even take the boards out of my car. That's sad. It's real. Sad. I just had zero time to do I mean, it. It's vacationing with with toddlers though. Yeah. It just. It just any free time I had. It was like my kid, like I would have been able to bring the boards like down to the beach. Well, then I had two little ones I had to watch after, yeah. or they're napping, and that, somebody had to stay at the house. And guess who was staying at the house? It was it was me most of the time. So, um, yeah, I didn't but that's get where the throw. beer is coldest. Yeah, so. oh, well, I got it. Well, so well, or margaritas or marks. So we went through two bottles of tequila the first three days. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you listened to the Dogcast episode. I did. And, that uh, was it sounded um, a little schnocker. That was the first full night that we were there. The first full day, so mm-hmm. I think it was Sunday. That was a full bottle of uh, tequila, pretty much. It sounded um, like it. It was. Uh, it was. It, I mean, it was fun. It, it's. I love going to the beach. It was relaxing and everything. But it's always good to get home. Yeah. On um, Fourth of July, we went over to um, our neighbor's house or my, our parents' neighbor's house. They had a 60th birthday party. We've nice. known them forever. Dad and I were there. Saw some boards. Some guys. Some people were playing. My dad's like, "You want to play next game?" I'm like, "Yeah, call next game." So we took the winners. We went two and zero, three and zero, and then nobody wanted you to play. You guys were playing with classic corn and duck, right? We were playing with duck and corn, and Dad was complaining because the bags were just too <laughs> fast, and all the bags were different shapes. Um, it didn't really matter. I mean, it was just again, like you said, if the first two bags were off the board for them, I was just going airmail. Yeah, airmail drag. I even tried like. Rolls like wheel shots, just weird stuff like that. So, but yeah. it, was, it was fun. It was still going out there for me. It's not as much fun playing against people that aren't at least somewhat competitive. Yeah. Like if it's too easy, like I get bored quick. I no, I get it. But I'll tell you what was the best part of our cornhole tournament was it was on Sunday as well, and like the day of Fourth of July. We we got out early and played like we started at like ten a.m. Oh, okay. tournament. Well, by the time it was done, we walked inside and. Guess what was on TV? Cornhole. The, the Pro Invitational was on then. So everyone sat there d- during lunch and watched the pros play, and they're sitting there like, oh, these were the shots you were explaining. So like, they kind of started to understand where I was coming from with like some of the the tactics, I guess, in the game. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot, of, a lot of fun. So you all right, So you brought it up. So let's start with the ACL Pro Invitational. Okay. I didn't write anything down. Um, were you surprised by... First of all, who won, or were you surprised by the two teams that were in the finals? No on any of it. Because, yeah, honestly, either. it's a total crapshoot nope. going into that. I mean, you have a totally different partner, yep. and bag choice was a big play, I felt like, for that whole tournament, except for the guys that obviously got paired with someone yeah. who happened to throw the same bag. But all in all, I think the hot hands won. Yeah. Is really my brother, my brother-in-law, Joey, um, was gambling on DraftKings. Yeah. He was very happy with me. Oh, yeah. He basically just handed me his phone. He's like, can you do the cornhole stuff? And he sent me a screenshot of the money he won, so we did pretty well. There um, you go. Pro Invitational. Looking at it, I didn't write a preview for it. I just ran out of time when I was on vacation. The two teams in the finals, I thought that there were three teams that I would have bet would have made the finals. It was definitely Ryan Smith, 
and Cheyenne Runner. I mean, they were my top seed going in. I yeah. thought for sure they were going to be the team to beat. Um, just because Cheyenne Runner, at the level of female, I didn't think it mattered how they paired up. She yeah, was going to be. She could throw against a male. Against she could throw against a female. It wasn't going to matter. She could at least stay with or be better than the person she was throwing. Ryan Smith, we know, is just steady. Yeah. He can pretty much throw whatever. He's going to get you tens consistently. Then you have Jay Rubin and Sarah Cassidy. I know the reason I like them is because they both throw similar style bags. Yeah. They like either an all slide. Um, I know Sarah Cassidy typically likes throwing a game changer. Mm-hmm. That's right up Jay, yeah. over Jay Rubin's he wheelhouse. Could throw, he could throw anything. They both are more of like a slide player. Jay Rubin can hit epic airmails. I mean, his airmail game, yeah. especially in the, in the quarterfinals, which is on point. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't surprised. Now, the one team I would have maybe. I thought that maybe they had a a, a, a good chance of winning it. Um, it's kind of like, I guess if you want to consider them a dark horse, was Rockwell and Belvin. Yes, um, absolutely. Again, they throw similar type of bags. Rockwell is sneaky good. We've been saying it all year. Um, in doubles, he's been up and down a little bit, but he's been playing better of late. And Cameron Belvin, I mean, you just never know what you're going to get out of her. Yeah. You put her with a good partner, I mean... They, or if she's on. I mean, yeah, I mean, they played really, really well. This year, they're just... The one, the one I will say is very disappointing was uh, Matt Guy and Coy. Coy, I felt bad for her a little yeah, bit. Yeah, she, she struggled just, big time. I think she was not used to the speed of the board. She kept going short on yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know what was going on because in even I think Trey Ryder even touched on it. She's like the fifth-ranked singles player for women's right yeah. now. She's not. I mean, she's very no, she's, great she's player. she's very good, yeah. The female player that I was, I've been most impressed by this season as like the most improved, I guess, would be Lori Duell. Yes. Um, she has just got a nasty game. She I does. mean, she doesn't do anything fancy. She keeps bags around the hole. She can hit a push shot when she needs to. But I've been super impressed by her. You know, she threw those local bags great. She really did. <laughs> she threw for, I mean, she threw them better than Cody did. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean, I think Cody would be the first to admit that he was the reason why they didn't make it. Yeah, I mean, but uh, yeah, I was just very impressed with Lori Duell. I think that uh, if it wasn't for the crappy hat she was wearing, I mean, she would be uh, <laughs> she'd be a little bit even higher. Uh, but yeah, it's a pro invitational. I like it. It's a cool event. I like that they paired the male and female. They went like the co-ed kind of thing. Yeah, I like that. Actually, yeah. yeah and you know what? I TV. thought that going into it, I thought it was going to be round limited. When I saw that it wasn't round limited, I was so pumped. I'm like, all right, yeah. this changes everything. Yeah, it really does. Because everyone, you can be as aggressive as you want. Yep. And I, I think it kind of it let each player play their own strategy as opposed to trying to just play the round limit. Yeah. Now people now on when I when I was making my predictions originally for the pro invitational. I thought it was round limited. Yeah. If you had taken it away, would I have considered maybe like a Trey Birchfield? Probably not. And this is no offense to her. I just don't think Jackie Sayasone is consistent enough to hang with not some yet. of the caliber of players. Because if you matched her up against a male, I think that. Yeah. And I, I'm not trying to be sexist or anything. No, I just I feel mean, like she's, she's that caliber. There, yeah. But I like, just feel like. Like you said, she has. She's that, that pro that'll give up a six. Yes, sometimes. Yeah, and yeah. like that, you can't have that at, facing against that competition. Yeah. So. And even Trey just seemed like he was off a little bit this whole weekend. Yeah, a little bit. It was not. It was not like the robot Trey Birchfield we were typically seeing. So um, surprising, but I, again, I love the Pro Invitational. I love how they set it up. It was a great event. Well, I think uh, I think you Trey Birchfield's performance is indicative of board conditions being drastically different in this one than the rest of them. Could be. Now, I heard most of the boards were playing slow, but then when you got on the broadcast, it was much, it was much, much faster. faster. Yeah. yeah, and I think Isidro will be the first to tell you, because yeah. his first match... Oh, yeah. yeah I think it's Struggling. Like, yeah, his first, like, eight bags, I think three of them went off the back, and he yep. just looked, he looked at his hand like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like... We'll get to him. Yes, we will. All right, so let's move on. So we're going to go... We're going to talk about the ACL final chase, which is national number four, if you get confused by, like, all the names like I do. Um, let's start with singles. Okay. All right, Ryan Windsor. All right, beats his doubles partner Isidro Herrera in um, in an okay finals match. Ryan yeah. Windsor just looked like the best thrower all weekend. He really did. He and looked like the old Ryan Windsor. I should um, say in singles. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. We're just talking about singles right now. Um, Isidro Herrera is man. Is he like robotic, machine like? I mean, that's his nickname's the machine. I mean, I mean it's just—it's it, it's very fitting because he—he really is same same approach every time. And when he was down, I think it was twelve or thirteen to nothing in that second game to Tony Smith. I'm thinking, Tony Smith, man, they, all right, yeah, good for you, I was man. Like, hey, and then, this, but the you know what? Been hearing Calm, about. cool, and collected. He acted like he'd been there before because he has. He's been around the game for such a long period. He didn't panic. He just stuck to his game play. 
just kept chipping away at it before he, he knew it. Finding a spot, and that I, was it, I believe man. he scored twenty one straight. He did, yeah. yeah I mean, I, it was just uh, it was a very impressive performance. I, I would have liked to see a, maybe a little bit more of a competitive game in the finals, but again, when Ryan Windsor is on, there's not there's not a whole lot you can do. But back to back to that match against Tony Smith, I just want to give Tony Smith another shout out. Because yeah. Dude was slinging. Dude, and he played phenomenal. Now listen, I watched his match against Ian Cripps. Yeah. And I'm going to give shout out to the little man because I had said earlier that, or I don't even think I've ever said it on the show. I've been when I've talked to people, I, I wondered when they if is he going to qualify automatically as a pro, and if not, with the quality of amateur players coming up, is he good enough? Would he not make that top eight? That's a I'm good a, question. I'm I mean, not saying he it. wouldn't. I know he. I, I know the kid is phenomenally talented. He hadn't really shown up on the big stage yet. He had two signature wins. Yeah. Do you know who he? So besides Tony Smith, do you know who else he beat? I don't. Jay Rubin. Okay. I mean, right there, that's, that is two yeah, top two quality people. Right yeah. He went on a nice little run in singles. He played very, very well. But Tony Smith to lose his second match, and then to run all the way back through. That's what I was. I that's what I've been waiting to see. To me, that means he's. He's finding that that mental game Correct. to be able to bring it back and and come back and finish some out. Now, there's two ways you can look at it. Either that the match against Ian either woke him up and he started taking it seriously, or he started having fun with it because he's like, you know what, like, what do yeah, I have to lose? What's the worst I can do? Like, yeah, I mean, like, who cares? Like, yeah. let's just go. Either way, whatever he did, it worked, and he got locked in. Yeah. And it was this Tony Smith we've all been waiting to see, and it was fun to watch. And the game is better when that style of play is good. I gotta say, I didn't realize how big of a kid Tony Smith was. Yeah, I didn't realize he was He's like that. Man. Yeah, I didn't realize he was like that He's tall like and eighteen. Yeah, anything? but like, but I mean, no, I mean, like, I know he was. Oh, tall, tall, lanky. Yeah, he's tall, lanky. Like, I didn't realize he, he was is. that tall. But um, yeah, Tony, I was uh, very impressed by him, and happy to see him make that that broadcast finally. I mean, yep. uh, it, it showed that he's one of the better players in, in the pros. Yep. So. So we had Ryan Windsor defeating his double partner, Cedro Herrera. They take first and second. Tied for third was Devin Harbaugh and Mike Harvey. Um, Devin Harbaugh, I'm going to give a little credit to, he had quite the gauntlet to get through. Yes. His little subsection had Kyle Malone and Noah Wooten. Obviously, he wasn't going to have to face both of them. But just, I had even written in my preview article, whoever makes it out of those three is going to make a deep run. He ended up winning the bracket. I yeah. mean, that is just, he's showing his potential. Absolutely, and honestly, is there anyone that makes you more nervous when you watch the no. Devin Harbaugh? No, he's so antsy. Yeah. Like, I just want to, like, calm him down. <laughs> Every like, time just... he throws a bag, it's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, throws it, like, dance around. But the kid's crazy talented. Um, he didn't have his best game, you know, in the semifinal match. Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. But, but you know what it takes to get there. Oh, I like, know, that's, man. That's my biggest thing is, like, we've, we've seen these tournaments come up. Just making a broadcast is so hard nowadays. Yep. So if you make it there, then... You were by far one of the best throwers of the day. Yeah, and Mike Harvey slaying the dragon. Damon Dennis taking him down to win the bracket. Yeah, I mean, that is that was a really cool moment. Damon Dennis was um, a true sportsman. I mean, do you want to call it? Is he everyone's best cheerleader when he's facing him? Because every time Mike Harvey hit a shot, he was just like, "Man, great shot!" I think like, he. Job, I just man. think he appreciates good competition. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, like when somebody he wants hits everyone's really, yeah. best when he faces them. One of my favorite matches all weekend to watch was the senior singles championship between him and Philip Hayden. Yeah, actually, I love I that. Just watched that one. Like, I think that was the first ago. time in a long time that I actually I think ESPN had to bleep something out. Yeah. Because I think Philip Hayden let out like a. A fuck or something. I think you're right. And they had to, like, they quickly, like, blurred it, like, shook screen, like, <laughs> came back. Um, but that was a fun match. But, yeah, the fact that Mike Harvey showed that he could take down Damon Dennis, who has been, there's no question, he's been the most consistent and the most dominant singles player in the league this year, just shows how much talent this kid has. And we've been saying it for ever. Yeah. I've been preaching this all year. I've been waiting for Mike Harvey to have this breakout scene. This is it. He already had, he was already on one broadcast. He was on the CBS broadcast. He lost one and um, didn't have his best showing on the CBS and the yeah. round limited. Then you get here. Again, he didn't have his best showing, but I, that's why I wanted to get him on the show and ask him, is it nerves? Do you, do you remember what I said, though, after his performance on CBS? Was, I don't. It was, it's always the guys who show up and like don't have a great performance on the main stage because of nerves that – it seems like the next time they get the chance, they're always back there. Yeah, I mean yeah, that's they true. just they and then they they seem to ball out and like I'm sorry, like I know you might not have had his like 
textbook great performance against Damon Dennis or anything. No, I mean, he did. I mean... I thought that was his best game. There was game. a lot of missed bags both ways. Yeah, yeah, there was. But I well, was the, bag, like, the boards were playing so fast. Yeah, though. and then, but his, like, those couple big shots that he hit, like, to me, there's no pressure on him. No. The next day, I think it was more just, maybe just tiredness. Is there anyone in the game that looks like they're having more fun playing than Mike Harvey? Not, not at the all. The dude's just constantly yeah. smiling. I, it reminds me of watching little kids when they're bowling. Yeah. When they bowl the ball, they're trying to use their arm to like push them. <laughs> I mean, it's it's crazy. Um, but he's very entertaining to watch. He's good for the sport. Yes, absolutely. He is the kind of guy that the ACL would want to market. Yep. 100% without a doubt. Were you ready for another yet? Yeah, please. Okay. My, uh, my throat is getting a little dry here. I know. That's I'm, what trying, I'm trying to hold together for you all. stay hydrated. <clears throat> I'm trying. Okay, so... In fifth place, or this is second place in their bracket, we had Eric Anderson, Damon Dennis, Tony Smith, and Eddie Grindersleeve. Um, two individuals to me stand out the most. Eric Anderson, Tony Smith. Yep. They both kind of got a monkey off their back. This yeah, yeah, just like they're, they're showing that they showed their true potential. They lost in the bracket final. But to me, the only chance you have to win a national championship all right, one of these events, is if you make it to the bracket final. Yeah. They did it. Eric Anderson had Ryan Windsor on the ropes. Beat him game one. Second game, I don't... I, he was just missing one bag. And I don't know Windsor what happened. It up. I don't know if he... I don't want to say he lost focus. I don't know if he just... You know, we've all had those moments where one game we feel like you can't miss, yeah. and then that next game, just the smallest something happens. Like maybe I mean, it's, and it just, I think it's just the a nature of the double, deep, the double dip, though, because you like that first game. There's so much pressure, and then it, like you focus so hard. And then once you get that first game yeah. out of the way, I feel like it is a little hard to like refocus, get it right back to where you're at, and start letting it rip again. It's really hard to beat a great player twice in a row. Yeah, and Ryan Windsor is a great player. Yeah, but you know what, Eric Anderson, I think showed everybody that he has the potential, very much like Devin Harbaugh. That he could win the whole thing. Tony Smith, the, the same I thing. I think he hit the shot of the day. Oh, yeah. That roll shot yeah. over oh, top. Beautiful. <laughs> Jesus. Tony Smith, again, same exact scenario. We've been waiting for it. He was arguably the most hyped player coming into the season. I've been overly critical of him, and I'm well, you know, glad the, to admit that. But you know what? Listen, he impressed the hell out of me. Yeah. I love watching the kid play. I'm happy, and I want to see him continue the success. I agree, because he's a really fun guy to watch. He throws... A muddy game, which we've always said is, it's much more entertaining to see on TV. Yep. So and he he does it with the best of them. I, so I'm going to call another one of these players. I'm going to draw a comparison to a female player. Okay. Eddie Grindersleeve is like the Maya Cup. Just gets to the main stage and then just falls kind apart. Of falls apart. I mean, Maya Cup did end up winning. She won Women of the Year of event year last year. But like, I mean, she tends to give up big rounds and big moments and. Grindersleeve is so talented, and he gets on that main stage, and he just doesn't seem to have necessarily his best game. To me, I think I think the speed of the board had a lot to do with it for him. It might, but because you can tell listen, he's throwing that wizard, and he was expecting that thing to cut right to left for him, and it was not doing it at all. I, and I think it I think it just threw him off enough to really. His fifteen year old partner figured it out pretty fucking quick, though. I, Sean, I, I'm not talking about Caleb Batson right now. I'm talking about Eddie Grindersleeve. All right. No, I, um, I'm a big fan of Eddie, and I, I love his game. I just I feel like he hasn't been accurately represented when he's made the main stage, and people are probably some of like the am, like if you're not real familiar with it, you're watching that and you're like, he made it here. Yeah, exactly. It's, and yeah. that's not true. I mean, this kid, the guy is fucking lights out. I mean, obviously, obviously, he took second you, in his bracket. You ask all the guys in Texas, they're yes. gonna be like, yeah, Eddie's the best. That's right. <laughs> so I think like we're gonna see him take something down here in the near future. Yep. Maybe it's just not this season. Yep. All right, so then we have um, some big-name people taking third in the bracket. We had James Baldwin, Matthew Stout, Ryan Smith, again, takes third in this bracket for, like, every tournament. So yeah. if you want a safe bet on DraftKings, if they save Ryan Smith over under third place, I mean, I, I, I don't even know how you bet that yeah. because he just takes third every time. take third. And then you also had Matt Guy tied for th- uh, third in the bracket. Um. I mean, this group of guys, any one of them, I've been saying for a while, Matt Stout has the game to make it. Yeah. Um, he had a lot of hard games. I was impressed with how much he was able to – I'm trying to remember he had a match against somebody, and he came back and won from way back. Um, and I'm blanking out on it right now. But 
The kid has a phenomenal game. It's only it's only a matter of time before he wins a national. Absolutely. It's yeah. not if, it's it's when. Yeah, and when it happens, I feel like it's not going to be... It won't, like, he'll win it easily, I feel like. He'll just go through and blow away the competition in one tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mac Guy taking third in his bracket. Is this just setting up for, like, him winning the world championship in singles? I do. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I he's just like... been knocking on the door all year. You know what I mean? Like, he's made, I think, two out of the five he's finished top five. Uh, two out of the four nationals he's finished top five. In singles, was he throwing the control or was he throwing um, I, the I, assault? I, I think he was sticking with the same bag. So I he think was he was control? I believe so. Okay. So that's his third different bag in one season. Yeah, I just, um, and obviously he's still, I think he's still, there's some adjustment period with him not stepping. Yeah. Um, but again, when you, when you have this much talent in the league and you're going through all the, going through gauntlet after gauntlet, I mean, it wears on you a little bit. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and the, the, the competition is ACL, just so deep. Like last season, you look at ACL, it was like, I mean, he would walk his way into the, probably the semis. There's no names above matches. Matt Guy that I would look at and be like, I'm shocked that they're there. No, not at all. And that's what I'm saying. Like, that's just how deep the talent pool is in yeah. the ACL right now. Now, does it take away that Matt Guy is the goat of Cornhole? No, not right now. Not in any like sense of the word no. because no one will ever reach the status that he has with the amount of championships he has. Correct. Alright, so then the one player I wanted to quickly mention, I mentioned him in my preview article, I mentioned him even last week. I wish I had a horn so I can toot it for you, so you can toot your own horn. Actually, you'd, you'd have to toot it. Dylan Turpin. <laughs> um, he has been playing really well. Um, every national like over the last three he has gotten better, each one. He tied for 13th this one, It was just fourth in his bracket. He's a name that you need to kind of watch out for. You mentioned him in the, the USA Armed Forces. Correct. So he battle, is so. He's playing very well. He's a name that um, I think he doesn't give it enough respect for how quietly good he's been all season. Yeah, no, I agree. It, all is, right. he, is he there yet? I, I think he's... He's a little bit out still. Yeah, yeah, I think where he's finishing, I think he is like somewhere right now. I think he's top 20 right now. Yeah, I would say like 15 to 20. Yeah. Somewhere in there he could probably finish. Maybe just outside, but right around there. But still, from going from a name where probably 90% of the cornhole world had no idea who the hell this guy was yeah. to having a very solid season right now, that, that I mean, that's that's big moves. That's big moves. Right. Here's a question for you. Shoot. Where does Andy Grittish sleeve rank for you? Um, if we're going just on singles, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll just go singles. We're going to go over some numbers here, and this is going to kind of validate where I'm at. If you're going in singles, I think you have to put him in... I, I think you have to put him in the top 10 right now. Maybe top 12. And we're going to validate with some numbers yeah, here. Uh, I was, I was going to agree, too. Like, I just wanted the, the people to hear that, like, it's not always about winning. No. He's just always in the mix, and it he, makes a big difference. He has been. So, Damon Dennis, all right, surprise. He's the only player to place in the top five in all four national events this year. Yep. I mean, that is ridiculous. The only player Amazing. out of 256 ACL pros to finish in the top five or top it's five in all four. And not doing anything fancy. Guy just slinks his bag in. Although, did you see the cut shot he added? Was right. that, I mean, awesome. Yes. Ridiculous. It was, it was nasty. That patch, like, he can he can work that patch better than a lot. A lot I mean, that people, was so. unbelievable. I could, I, seriously, it was so cool to watch that. Um, there has been one player who has finished the top five in three out of four nationals. Do you know who this player is? That'd be uh, one of my favorites, Cody Henderson. Correct. So he had a second, a third, a fifth. Now this national, he fell off a little bit. He took 45th. Yeah. But hey, does that? Your let me score. ask you, does that hurt his argument as MVP? Not if they drop the lowest score. Are we giving out participation medals too? I'm just going with what the ACL goes on. I know. I just think it's ridiculous. Like you drop your lowest score. I'm still gonna remember if I'm voting. I think this I'm is still gonna be the last season that we see that because to me it's like. I know they used to drop the lowest score because it was hard for the. Is pros somebody's to get mom to all bringing four. snacks at the end of the event too? Like, I mean, come on, this is a fucking t ball. I mean, if it you... better be some hugs. Remember those little, oh yeah, little yeah, absolutely, pure sugar drinks. Um, 
<laughs> to me, it hurts a little bit just because Damon Dennis, again, another top five finish. Of course it finish. hurts. I mean, Goddamn. I honestly expected Cody to walk in, and I thought this was going to be his tournament. I thought he was going to bring it all together. I, honestly, I thought he might have swept. If you were asking me before the tournament, I wasn't. I was actually expecting Hissner to do better than Henderson. Were you really? Only because if you look at how Hissner's um, career has been during singles, he's always done better at like the last later on. Well, yeah, like one or two national events. Hissner and Henderson, they're always there in doubles. Are they? That was going to be my next question. We'll get, we'll there. get over it. Then. We'll get there. But but yeah, Hissner is always typically there towards the end of the season. But Henderson, forty fifth. If he had finished in the twentieth. Okay, maybe yeah, it's easier to forget that. But forty fifth, that's just that's yeah, tough. Yeah, it's it's it was not a good showing, but he, I felt like he was just a little bit off this whole weekend. Yeah, even in like doubles. It, yeah. like I mean, he was not the point scorer for them in doubles. Now seven players, okay, seven players have finished top five in at least two singles events through the first four nationals. Okay, Brett Guy, Matt Guy, Eddie Grindersleeve, Devin Harbaugh, Isidro Herrera. Trey Birchfield, and the surprise to me was Jimmy McGuff. Jimmy McGuff. Kind of just snuck in there. He's taken fifth at two events. Um, again, he's one of those. He's having a, a quiet, sneaky, sneaky good, good season. You yeah. know what I mean? Just ho-hum, shows up, does his work in singles. Um, Watch him have a, have a sneaky good year in doubles last year and, and take it home. So. And that's why if you're asking me, if I had to vote on where does Eddie Grindersley fall, if you're taking these seven players plus Cody Henderson and Damon Dennis, we're talking just singles, you have to place him in the top ten. Yeah, I agree. Because finishing in the top five is almost unheard of. Yeah. So you take those seven, and then you take Damon Dennis, and you take Cody Henderson. That fills out 21 of 32 possible. 21 out of 32 possible top five finishes. Now you're like, well, top five, why 32? Because if you tied for fifth, that's technically eight spots. All right, so eight times four is 32. So you take 21 out of 32, just out of those seven players alone, that's 65% of the field. Yeah. 65%. That's crazy. I mean, that's – I mean that's now it gets even worse than doubles, and, again, we're going to go over <laughs> that. But 65%, that's a big deal. So you have to give credit for those guys that have doubled up. Yeah. That, that means, so if there's 21 of 32 spots that were taken by those seven individuals, that means 11 spots were open for other individuals to make one-time appearance in the finals. Ironically, two of those 11 were champions. We're champions, yeah. Steven Bernasette, Ryan Windsor. Their only top five finish this season has been at the national that they won. Mm-hmm. Is that so a little Bernicet, surprising? I mean, for Windsor, yes. Okay, I completely agree. For yeah. Bernasette, like, yeah, he had a, he had a great... I mean, a very dominant performance to win his singles championship. I just think he's a better doubles player. Like I, I don't know him and him and Gustafson are forced to be reckoned with, but his other finishes are indicative that like maybe he just loses focus or something playing singles sometimes. Now I wanted to say he was for a while the only player to win singles and doubles at an open event. Yeah. Didn't Trey Birchfield also do I that? I think Birchfield did it, too. Because when he played with Hicks, Hicks, did he win singles, too? No, he lost in the championship to... Uh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Right, because right. he was he's, he was one yeah, one away yeah, from, yeah, 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 from yeah. winning his fourth straight. But <coughs> that's not holding in anything against <coughs> Bernasette. He's a fantastic player, and honestly, I, I put him top 25. Who's in that? Bernasette. Just, just in my... I'm not even talking about, like... ACL ranking type. I'm talking about like let's all encompassing of doubles, singles, open events, everything. I mean, to me, he's just he's there. Let me ask you this: He does it all well. Oh, there's 256 pros. Yeah. Have you made a list of all of them? How many do you think out of that 256 have a real? And again, this is not a shot at anybody. We're throwing out numbers, not names. <clears throat> How many of them do you think have a realistic chance of winning a singles event? Just because of the way Cornhole is? Yeah. 50 names. So you think it's that many? Yeah. Okay. I really do. Okay, like a realistic chance. A realistic chance, I do. Okay, all right. Uh, that's good. It's higher than me. Because like, to me, I think like like a guy like Jay Rubin. I think he could just have himself a day. I, I mean, to me, Jay Rubin is top 20, top 25. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying like he's yeah. an example of a guy that he was not mentioned in any of these, yet we know how good of potential he has. Yeah. 
he can. He so can let just me have read off these. So I said there's eleven players, right? Yeah. So we had uh, Ryan Windsor and Bernasette, right? So we're two of them. So yeah. there's nine other names. We have Eric Anderson, Tony Smith, Mike Harvey, all from this past national, mm-hmm. right? You have Jay Rubin, Matthew Stout, Tyler Poitras, Kyle Malone, Noah Wooten, Cameron Belvin. Ironically, the first, the last four I read were all from National One. Mm-hmm. All right, so most of those names came from National One and this most recent one, meaning it's it's been pretty stacked with those top seven guys. Okay, yeah, um, or I'm sorry, top nine guys are filling out most of those spots uh, for those for the eight spots for the top five. Yeah. If you add up all those num- if you add up all those names, right? That's what eighteen. Mm-hmm. I mean. Right there, that's to me. Jay Rubin's top twenty. Any of those names? Now the only one, and again, I don't mean this as like a knock to anyone. I might leave off of that top twenty list. Is Cameron Belvin? Well, she. I mean, she came in the first national. Did she get hot the right now? I would maybe swap out. I know she had a better finish, Renner, with Belvin. Now, right <laughs> now, yes. The way Renner's throwing. Well, th- I mean, yeah. this is fluid. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, right yeah. now, if we're going right now, that's probably what and I, I think, do. I think if you ask Cameron, she would say And the there's same a few thing. names like Tyler Poitras. I'm taking him out, and I would sub in somebody like maybe like a, a Turpin. Yeah. Like a Dylan Turpin. Somebody that's playing very well, like mm-hmm. right now. Um, but again, that's the nice thing about having four nationals now is that it gives you some. It's, it's not a huge sample size, but it gives us some statistical data to go off of and just start seeing some sort of trends. Mm-hmm. And people are at, you know, I'm sure you're sitting like. You guys are throwing all these numbers. Why does it matter? It's going to become a bigger deal now that gambling is a part of cornhole. Absolutely. With DraftKings. You want to know these kind of things when you're making your selections and to try to make some money. Yeah. So if we're getting real dirty on all this stuff, let's say somebody like, um, let's use Tony Smith, right? So he's taken top five in one out of the four events, right? Mm -hmm. So based on all those numbers, he has an 8% better chance of the field, not including the those other 18 people, he has an 8%, 8% chance better than th- just the average player to make it top five. Yeah. So his Now, for are... somebody like Tony Smith, though, because he's been playing so well recently, I might bump that up a little bit higher. Yeah. Whereas somebody like Poitras, who hasn't finished top five since National 1, I'm going to maybe put his odds maybe just slightly above. Yeah. Like maybe a one or two percent chance, and maybe add that onto like an Eric Anderson, Tony Smith. Yeah, I agree. So that's the way I look at things when I'm going to do these preview, like articles. Like I look at stuff, and I'm like, all right, what what are the percentage? Because that's all you can go by is percentages. Any given day, I understand that anyone could beat anybody, and there's always going to be those upset and those magical runs. Yeah, you're gonna have one of those. There wasn't really any of those deep runs this time, but anyone that was truly unexpected, because you had guys like Eric Anderson, Tony Smith, Mike Harvey, all names of guys that we expected to had already have done this. So now, to me, based on Windsor's season, I was a little surprised that he was as dominant as he was in this one. I know we all know how good he is. Yeah. But to me, he kind of came out of nowhere and showed the old Windsor yeah, last year. Yeah, I think year. last, I think the third national, I think he took like ninth. Yeah, and so like, he's been it was, getting he was trending up there. Upward. Yeah, and I, I think a I lot agree. of it has to do with his injury feeling yeah. better and him finally being able to get that nasty bag rotation. I will back. give Trey Ryder a credit. I believe, I think he had Windsor pegged to finish top three. I did not. I didn't have. I had him going yeah. to the semis. Trey I mean, Ryder's I had him got the way more statistical information than we have. At our listen, I like to give credit where credit's due. I mean, I thought um, he had Windsor's name up there. Um, I didn't. I just. I had Windsor making it to the semis, but I didn't think he was going to win it. Again, I thought he was getting closer. I didn't know if he was quite there yet. Yeah. Um, but listen, he showed that he is by far one of the best players in the country. That, I mean, without a doubt. <laughs> We've always. I've always loved his game. So I think singles is more wide open to win, which means it's harder to predict. Yeah, I agree. So, um, because like, I mean, once you get to doubles, I mean, there's been just what would you say, ten teams that have just kind of dominated right now. For the most part, yeah. And I have some of that written down. Um, like in our in the preview article, I actually thought I did worse in singles than I did Look, going back. So in singles, when I do the preview article, it's too hard going through like and predicting the losers bracket and everything. So yeah. I go through just the winners bracket, quarterfinals and semifinals, and then. I, again, I, or else it's just going to take, it's going to be oh, 40 yeah. pages long. So in the quarterfinals, I had 17 out of 32 correct. 53%, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Now, the semifinals, I only had 5 out of 16 for 31%. I didn't do that well predicting 
who is going to win those quarterfinal matchups, but, I mean, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. Yeah. I it is what it is. I thought you did pretty damn well. If you bet based on what you wrote, Yeah. you were in the you were in the green, so. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to doubles, okay? Um, this was a fire cornhole event, pretty much. 100%. Guy and Graham defeated Guy and Davis. Um, fire cornhole is just absolutely dominating the doubles world. I mean, it, there's no other question to it. Well, you have... You have Eric Davis, who we keep saying is probably the best doubles player right now in Cornhole. Yeah. Um, and then Brett Guy, a magician of just pulling in bags from freaking nowhere. Yeah, and he even, uh, this is the first time I can remember seeing, typically Brett Guy's that player that when he gets on the main stage, he gets better. He just seemed a little off. He did. He did a little bit. But you can't do it every time. No, I mean, no, no, I like, get it. Listen, everyone's yeah. due for a bad game exactly. or two. I, I get like, it. I mean, I just, I think he just had himself just like a shitty game. Like, I mean, it wasn't even that shitty. He just wasn't on top of If DraftKings comes up, seen. right, so DraftKings Graf is going to come up for Cobbs, right, and it's going to be like, it's going to list Guy Graham, Guy Davis, probably um, Hister Henderson, or the field. And then Bat Guy Augustus Graham. Augustuson? Well, they give you four options most okay. of the time. Bat Guy Graham. Bad, bad. I mean, the two out of four. Yeah. They finished top five in every single. I actually, I think they're top four in every single finish. But what? I mean, what about Guy Davis though? They have one win. They have. Uh, they've. All right. So let's go through some of the stuff real quick. Go, go through it. <laughs> so, so three. T- so there's been three doubles teams throughout the season that have finished top five in all four nationals. It's Guy Graham, Hisner Henderson, and what's the third team? That's. Bernie and Gus. Yes. If you were betting, those are all safe bets. If Absolutely. we're talking fantasy football, those are first round draft An picks. An even better bet. If you see Gustafson and Bernison on the opposite side of Graham and Guy, bet them all day. I think it comes down to <laughs> if, as long as they're in a bracket without a Guy family member or anybody in Fire Cornhole, yeah. then you should bet then them. you should bet them. Absolutely. Um, okay, so let's see where else. Three doubles teams have placed top five in three out of four nationals. That's Guy Davis. Because remember, national number one, they had that uh, subpar showing. Yeah. Campbell and Baldwin and Grindersleeve and Batson. Campbell and Baldwin were one game away from being included in that top group where they were going to be top four. Yeah. Or top five. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, just shows the pure dominance in doubles by six teams. Yeah. These six teams that we listed off, we talked about in singles how 21 of those 32 spots were taken up by, what was it, 11 individuals. In six spots, it's been taken up by six teams. Yeah. And that's... So 65% of the spots in doubles in those top five finishes are made up of six teams. There's not a whole lot of room for anybody else. It's called a safe bet, folks. Absolutely. The only teams to crack the top five in the other three nationals were Wooten and Sorrells, Harvey Washington, Windsor Herrera, Habib and Ferreira, all from national number one, yeah. right? So it was just which is kind of weird. Zaft Hadley, Birchfield and King, Spees and Beamer, those were from national number two. Sims Gross, Power and Webb, that's national three. And then kind of a little bit of a shocker, Ron Kugel and Eric Schern. I'm not I think I'm it is sh- I think it is Schern. And then Stranger and Smith. Yeah. Who I was happy to see them Very, live, yeah. Up, yeah, live yeah. up to the expectations. There was only three teams outside of those top six that have cracked the top three. Yeah. And Wooten and Sorrells, they took second in national number one. You had Zaft and Hadley, they made their amazing run in national two. And Birchfield King. Which was, they were number two as well, right? Uh, or third. I think they took third in the second one, the second national. I just meant like, yeah. National number two is yep. when they made their run. To me, this shows how improbable Zaft and Hadley's run was. I'm not saying that they're bad players. I'm just saying where they were ranked and then the run that they made. Yeah. I had said it back then that you just don't expect a team to see a, te- a double team ranked 65th and they make a run all the way to the top four. That's why that was so improbable. And to me, that's still, out of everything that's happened this year, probably the most successful run of any like deep-seated team to make uh, like a bracket final for doubles, yes. Yeah. For singles, I would give that to Cameron Belvin. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess it's true. That, yeah, that run point. was just yeah, it was remarkable. Yeah, I think had. you can put either either one of those there. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, because I, I mean, Zaft Hadley, they fin- they finished third, but again, Belvin, you have to play more games, so yeah, um, yeah I guess you can make an argument either way. That's a good comparison. Um, so let's go back to doubles. Grinder, Stephen, Batson, Hister, and Henderson, they tied for third. They uh, they also won their respective brackets. Caleb Batson is coming out like a man. Ridiculous. Dude, like that kid. I mean, we've been saying it for a while now that he's super impressive and fun to watch, but this national, I think he put a stamp down as like, I'm here and look out for me. Because, like, the kid, once he gets his singles game together, too. I was going to say, do you know who he reminds me of slightly? Eric Davis a little bit. Right now he's just a phenomenal doubles player. Mm -hmm. Still kind of... Now, Eric Davis is still a step or two or three ahead of him in singles. Batson is... I think he's got to learn the game and be a little bit more patient and let the game come to him. He tries to manufacture points too often instead of just letting them come to him sometimes. Because there's there's some times where he shoots that... He tries to hit a ridiculous drag shot. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, all you had to do is just go in and get your two easy and walk away with two points. But instead, you you left that drag off to the right and it ended up being a wash. Or I so, mean, or sometimes a wash is not a bad thing. Take the wash and yeah, stop trying to get six yeah. points in one massive yeah, shot. Yeah, don't try to don't try to roll and drag but a listen, bag on your roll and stuff. If that's his gameplay and that's how he likes to roll, you just roll with it. Yeah. I get it. But if he's going to have if success on, long term and he wants to be a perennial like one of those names in the top twenty, yeah. Eric Anderson had to learn it. Eric He's Anderson become a much smarter has player now. Showing that he can stroke with the best of them, and that's what I'm saying. Batson has that ability. I think in singles, he just needs to mature a little bit and yeah. grow. And I think Tony Smith is the same thing. He had to mature a little bit, and we finally saw that all yeah, click. Absolutely, this it all clicked, and he was just trying to when he had to. He was just sliding bags in, which yep. I mean, that bag stays a little too far off to the right. Fuck it. Get your ten if you're only giving up two. To me, in, in the pro circuit, if you don't four bag it, give up two. That's a win. Yep. Uh, we had Baldwin, Camba, Stranger Smith, Bernasette and Gustafson, and then Shern and Kugel all tied for fifth and were second in their brackets. Um, again, I'm not going to lie. I saw only one match of Shern and Kugel. Dude, I, they just... I will tell you what, though. That Kugel's, match that I saw. Yeah. Ron Kugel's a great player. We yeah, know, I mean, we know was, of him. Like, they were both on fire in that game. And, like, I, I honestly only saw them each miss two bags in that entire match. I can't remember who they faced, though. And I was trying to think of it earlier. But they were just they they lost or they beat them. It was like twenty one to three. Yeah. When I saw it, I'm like, holy sh! Like it was like only a fifteen minute match. Just walk, bam, yeah. bam, thank you, ma'am. And the team that they faced threw down blockers and everything you could think of. They oh, just yeah. moved around them like it was nothing. Yeah. No. I mean, none of the teams were big surprise. I mean, Stranger Smith. I'm just I was happy to oh, see them dude, get to that. 100%. We've been waiting for them. Um, they've been going trending the right direction. I would like to maybe see him make a splash at Worlds. I'd be very surprised if they're going to partner up next year. From what I've been hearing, they're probably not going to partner up next year. Um, but, you know, it's nice to see that two kids with that much potential can put it together for a turn and make a good run. Right. And I say, like, to me, Justin Justin is, like, on that border of being considered a great player. He's, like, right on that cusp right yep. now. And, like, Tony Smith, I think this kind of, tri- pr- like, trajected. Yeah, yeah, put him up like a that. tier, yeah. Yeah, put him up another tier. But, like, I was very impressed with the way Justin was throwing, and I, I look forward to seeing him grow. Yep. All right, so we had Lucas Jr. and Michael Dinglis, Poitras and Modlin, Wooten Sorrells, and Clemmer Jones, all tied for third in their bracket. Lucas Jr. and Dingus. Um, they're a team I've been saying for a long time. They're eventually going to make a broadcast again. Is there any team that looks more cornhole than Lucas and Dingus? Dude, they're just they're so solid. Yeah, they like, really they are. Just, like when they step up to the board, man, they just they they're, look like cornhole players that are just going to come up and produce. And they always yeah, do. Hey, they're like, a very very rock solid team. They don't give up a whole lot of points and rounds. You really have to grind against them. Yeah. Um, so again, it's just again, it's a matter of time before they make a broadcast again. This they made another deep run. They're one of those teams that they're a very safe bet to finish like top ten, yeah. kind of thing in doubles. Um, let's just say who else was a surprise? Clemmer Jones putting together a very solid double season together. Um, this is I think their best performance since National One, where yeah. I think they, I want to say they took ninth. I think it was ninth that they took. But they're rounding the form. Clemmer jo- Clemmer had a great run in singles, and they kind of fell off. He had a what was his big win? He came in and beat a. He beat someone early that was in... Was it Damon Dennis? 
No. Oh, yeah, it was. It was Damon Dennis. Yeah, Correct. He came in, I think it was like their second match of the day, he handed Damon his, his first loss, and it was a good match. Like, he he really just kind of stuck it to Damon. <laughs> Damon couldn't do anything. Yeah, I, I mean, again, Clemmer was one of those guys that last year, he was kind of like that Berkeley pair. Yeah. Where everyone's like, oh, he's like the pro that, or he's the non-pro that, you know, could be a pro. He's the guy that hits all the shots and, like, watch out for him. And I think he's learning now that, like, there's a time and a place for all the shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's and, a, again, he's a very solid player. And, again, he's a year away, and we've been saying that for a while. If those two stick together for next season – they're they're gonna be they're trouble. Gonna be scary, yeah, yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be trouble next year. Um, uh, let's see, I did I want to give a shout out to two teams, uh, Resurrection and Labrador. Um, team Bang Bang. Bang Bang. Dude, um, they tied fourth in their bracket. They are getting little to no love. They missed national one, so their rankings were a little bit lower. Yeah. But we've been talking about the last well, two three the nationals. Right for Dude, sure. they, they just they're a sneaky team, man. They. They lose a match that somewhere in the bracket, but then they just battle through the loser's bracket, and they make life miserable for everyone. They're a very solid team. I'm hoping to get both of them out of the show soon. Yeah. Um, I want to find oh, yeah, out a little be, bit more about be a that. Fun so. one. And then uh, the other team is, again, we talked about Dylan Turpin. H- him and his partner, Gonzalez, they tied for fourth in their bracket. They've been moving up spots from 25th, then 21st, and then now they're in 13th. Again, they're a team going into the World Championships that – if they take that next step up, they can end up making a broadcast. Yeah, absolutely. So they're one of those teams, again, to kind of keep an eye out for. And, I mean, doubles, I, th- I feel like it's easier to track a doubles trajectory than it is singles. Yep. All right, so there are we're, – we're talking a little bit about the 65% and all the all the, the numbers before. But what does this tell us? To me, there are clearly – teams under the cream of the crop. There's really only a small window that's open for a team or two, statistically speaking, to crack the, to crack the top five. Um, it's hard enough to crack the top five without 21 of the 32 spots being taken up by six teams. Yeah. But it's that much more difficult in doubles. I mean, I think through four nationals, we're, we're seeing that there are really six teams that you should bet on to win a national. Okay. It, again, we know that anyone lie. can play, I mean, anyone can win, but in doubles in the ACL this season – bet on one of those six teams, yeah. they're going to win the But when it comes to betting, you don't want to bet on the, the long shot unless it's like a dollar. Correct. Besides that, if you want to win some money, you gotta, you got to go with the odds. And speaking of that, if you want to if you want to win money at DraftKings, make sure you check out my preview articles. In doubles, I predicted 8 out of 16 for the semifinals, and then I picked 3 out of 4 bracket winners. So follow the preview, win some money, and we'll have fun. You gave no love to Grinder, Sleep, and Batson. I picked... Uh, who did I pick? To, oh, I picked Cam and Baldwin, who they... Who I that was a good, accurately yeah. projected that they were going to lose and they come back through the losers bracket. Yeah. So then, I just, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying. But hey, real quick, we got a double feature today. We do. <laughs> what you drinking? Ooh, right. Yeah. Threw it in again. Jackie O's, little heat seeker. It's a double IPA. It's nine percent. We're gonna close out the the episode on a bang. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, drink beer, Jackie O's. Drink beer. I think that's their phrase. Or catchphrase. All right, so we're going to move on to the bag review. The bag review is brought to you by Bagsboard, the maker of the original cornhole bag backpack, now offering you a build-your-own feature that has over 10,000 combinations to choose from. Need patches to go on that sweet-ass bag? Bagsboard has some of the best around. Visit Bagsboard.com and grab yours today. Yay. I'm going to let you start with the epic Bags Ooh, Warrior yeah. because you were a big fan of it, and I'm going to save my Come voice for some of the other ones. Go for it. All right, so Epic Bags, the Warrior, uh, sexy bag. It looks cool Love as hell. Design. Uh, great design. It is a carpet bag, um, uh, BG carpet on one side, and then uh, like slide right on the other. If like looks really similar to slide right. Yeah. Um, so it plays exactly how you'd expect it because those materials are. What bag um, does this remind you of? Uh, to me, this is a Viking. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much a Viking. different fill. Yeah, a little different fill. Um, it's a, it's not quite as full as some of the Vikings I felt, but yeah. it's also n- more, or more full than some of the Vikings I felt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what do you think um, about fill size? But fill size, so it's a, a little bit. It's uniform. Okay. So that makes it a good bounce roll type bag, um, as we all know. But it's not as small as some of the other ones that you're feeling coming yeah. out. It's a little bit chunkier. Yeah. Um, so, if you're looking for a cheaper alternative, 
or I, I shouldn't even say cheaper because BG doesn't like gouge or anything. Yeah, no. But this is if you're if looking you for, look for availability, a, correct? A readily available bag yeah. that you want something that maybe you maybe you have ten sets of Vikings. You're like, I like the Viking, but I want to broaden my horizon. This bag is it's right really up your alley. Good, yeah. You threw it phenomenally. Uh, yeah, I, I love throwing it, and I'll, I will say um, it's got badass logo. Badass logo. It's not ACL stamped. Okay, so yet he, not yet. You can't throw it in those ACL events yet. Hopefully, coming up soon, they, I they believe, will have I believe, that. I, I, think, I believe it will yeah, be. Yeah, I thought I, I heard that um, through the interwebs that they were uh, going in that direction, but um, it plays just like BG Carpet you would expect it to. Um, nice and slow, about a three on that, that carpet side. Got about a seven on the fast side. And it rounded corners, great fill to it. It kind of gives you that little meat in your hand when you go to throw a nice carpet bag that you want. Um, all in all, like it broke in fast. It did very fast, and that that was another thing. Thank you for mentioning that. Was this is not this is not washed at all. If you guys can see that, this is like three games on this bag, and it is already like it's it's there. Like I mean, it's, it's that was in my hand. we picked that bag up um, when we played you know, a few matches in the backyard. Yeah, exactly. And we were and trying thing, all new bags. So like you pick yeah. one, I'll pick one new. Yeah, it's brand new. Go, and this yeah. thing was literally breaking in as I was throwing it. Yeah. So. You don't need to do anything special with it. Just start throwing it. It'll break in in no time. Um, honestly, for performance factor on this bag, I'm going to I'm gonna go a little high. I'm going to give it an 86. Okay, that's pretty good. All right. Um, for me, again, I like it. It's a, it's a solid bag. I, I'm just, I don't know. I, I just, there's so many, it's just the materials are so familiar. Yes. And, I mean, that's, that's the hard part of all of this is, like, we've been saying it forever. Half the bags out there are the same two, like, same five materials that we're throwing all the time. So I'm grading this not because of it's going to sound low. I'm going to go 68, and I'm not saying it because I don't like the bag and how it played. I'm saying there's other bags with the exact same materials or similar to that I would rather throw than this bag. Now I think what you're getting at is this because of the uniform fill. If you're not throwing it flat. This bag is kicking on it you. It does. Like I, one hundred percent, it's going to kick on you. You really got to spin the bag. If too. you, yeah, if you have a high revolution throw, you like to dance the bag a little bit, get a cut shot. This bag is freaking money because once I it's around it, the and hole, and I didn't throw it poorly. It's just, no, I just, it, like I mean, I, I get what you're saying though, because when I would get lazy and not really focus yeah. on the bag, I was getting to kick right, kick but left. Again, you threw this very, flat, very well. I, yeah, I did, and uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the fullness of it too. Because I, I do like score. a meat bag, um, dude. Design score, I'm going 90. Yeah, it, it's pretty sweet. It's got this badass skull here. I'll, I'll try to hold it up for the camera. Got a got a really cool skull, like little tribal Indian headdress on. Yeah, tomahawk. Home tomahawk. It looks like a warrior. I'm gonna go 83. Nice. All right. Well, All that's right. that's the epic bags warrior. We're gonna move on. Do you wanna take uh, take no. the WMD? All right, I'll take this one. All right, so we have the 724 Bagger Company uh, WMD. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a set um, from the man himself, Jared Nash. He sent me his own personal set that was all already broken in. He said that I just want you to go out and throw it and enjoy it and That's just tell me how it feels. That's how you so well, you bastard. <laughs> so Dane will tell you firsthand how well I throw this bag. Um, first thing that comes to mind in this bag, what were you thinking? Viper. Yes. Um, Hands down. Think of a Viper without the dots. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking OG Viper, not the waxy bullshit that they came out with now. OG Viper without the dots. When it starts getting a little bit fuzzy, I will say in humidity, this bag plays much slower to me than what an OG Viper does. But the slick side is the exact same. It is a um, it's a bigger template bag. I mean, we're talking like game changer size. Yeah, it really so it is. is like it is like it plays like a Viper, but it has a bigger surface area. It just means that it's just as hole forgiving, and it just grabs the hole. If you're someone like me that I tend to like that aspect of it, so even if I'm trying to go for you know a slide around shot, I just have more surface area to try to catch the hole. I threw this bag very well. Your goddamn wrap around shot, yeah, with that bag was ridiculous. Like so, if you if somebody throws a straight blocker at you, don't worry, just take a quarter step out to the side and throw it straight. If any corner of that bag hits the hole. It's just gonna loop right around the back and go like kind of toilet effect right into the hole. <laughs> yeah, I did notice there is ridiculous. a bit. It's pretty drastic. Um, on now on slick boards, this bag plays very very fast. Yes. Now, if you add some humidity though, 
We're talking it, it slows, slows big way time. Down. Yeah. So I'm talking like in slick conditions, we're going eight nine seven yeah. eight. I mean right right or um, I'm sorry seven nine. Right around there. Yeah. In the humid conditions, I mean, this could get all the way down to like a five. It's almost like, to me, it almost felt like players' sure, condition. Sure fire almost. Like, like players, uh, players' material. Players' material. Like how slow it, yeah. that can get. But it, I'm, I'm talking really, really humid conditions. Yeah. Or any moisture on the board. So summertime in Cleveland. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but it bag plays really well. Um, I like that it's bigger template. I love the fill. I mean, the bag's going to last forever. Um, I love the design. I mean, his designs are some of the best around. I His really designs like it. are unrivaled. We don't have to yeah. say some of the best around. Everyone else needs to get up to 724's level, honestly. If I'm rating this bag performance-wise, that what's the highest I've given a bag? 98, right? 98 or friction, right, or since friction. we've done all this stuff? Yeah. If this bag was stamped, this would be my go-to bag every time right now. Okay. That or the friction. Um... Because it's not stamped, and technically I wouldn't be allowed to throw it because in, in case somebody complained about it. That has I'm nothing gonna, to do with its performance, by the way. So take that out of it. What In your heart of hearts, Sean, any tournament you walk into, what are you giving that bag? The only reason I'm going to rate this lower than a friction is because I went to a tournament with a friction I played so well with it. So I'm going to give this one a 96. Okay. I All mean, right. it is very high up that's there. An honest, that's an honest grade. I have been... A huge fan of like OG Vipers forever. This is like an OG Viper, slightly bigger. It just reminded me of the fill and the feel, and and I'm assuming that's what Jared was going for with this bag. I hey, Desi- oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Performance I mean, pretty good for me. Like I mean, I'm not a fast bag thrower, but I'm gonna put it up there with some of these carpet bags that I've been rating. I'm gonna go 83, uh, and I'm keeping it up in the 80s because it is that hole forgiving. Yeah. And even if you throw a low hard bag, if you're straight, no matter where you hit it on the hole, it's gonna drop. Like it'll still grab it and it'll still go in. Now we have the release edition here. I wish I had the Airwolf edition because if it was the Airwolf edition, I was gonna give it a hundred for the design score. Fair enough. Because it's there, I'm gonna give it a ninety for the design okay. score. Yeah, and I, I do love I love the color of it. Yeah. It really pops against any bag yeah. on the board. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go right with you. I'll give it a ninety as well. Cool. Like I mean their their design is next next level okay so this next bat and obviously 724 we get it they're hard to get yes all I can say is just be patient there's things be part of the community because like I feel like a lot of the guys look out for each other well, yes. in that community yes. so like if you're really looking for a bag become part of the 724 army don't be a douche and guess what like you're gonna get the bags that you're looking for at a decent price they don't really try to price gouge too much unless it's Sean um I mean, you're going to have to pay a little extra if you don't get the release or or whatever, but they're worth it, man. I mean, they're I great I had some guy bags. argue with me, and you're probably listening to the show. Uh, I think his name is Silas Hess. I posted, they, somebody posted on Addicted to Cornhole what were, like, rare and expensive bags, and I posted a picture of my 8-bit, and the guy's like, he's like, those are rare, he's like, those are, he's like, but they're not that expensive. I'm like, this is the first set of bags that Jared Nash literally ever shipped out to sale. Yeah. And guess what? For sale. I mean, that's it. And that was the first set. I have them in my possession. It's the still my favorite 724 design of any bag. If you haven't thrown a bag. And he made one for us. You probably won't <laughs> ever because he doesn't make them anymore. They're, it's a phenomenal bag. It, it's but a great I was blown bag. away. I'm like, this bag. Now, it, I, listen, I know some people are like, I don't. I never understand the, the collecting of bags thing. Listen, I don't give a shit. What, you probably fucking collected bullshit when you were younger. I didn't give you shit. Yeah, I there's mean, some stuff. There's some bags I like because there's different conditions for yeah, it. Yeah, and honestly, it, it's it's art. Yeah. I mean, you're you're literally holding art. And guess nowadays. what? I have disposable income, motherfucker, so I can afford to do it. So I'm gonna do it. Don't brag. It's not because of the podcast, folks. <laughs> no, right? like no. That's just because no. he does well in life. Because <laughs> right? let me tell you, I'll tell you how many bags I've bought in the last year. It's been one set. <laughs> one set of bags. I can't say the same. I know. That's okay. why I was... Speaking of that, saying we're going to go to our next bag, Sasquatch. which I bought. Sasquatch. All right, so this is the C3 bag, Sasquatch. Um, a few, I mean, months ago? Sexy bag. A few months ago, we reviewed the C3 kilt, and this was a bag that and I had... And the Highlander. Se- and the Highlander, correct. Um, I had seen, come across, um, checked out the website. The bag sounded interesting. I reached out to um, Robbie Green and Len Hyatt. They sent us out some bags. I kept hearing... 
things about the Sasquatch bag and how it was a little bit different. And then I started seeing people really wanting it, right? So, like, people were like, hey, who has Sasquatch bags for sale? So, I'm like, are this bag starting to pick up some hype? So, when they had the release the one day, I, I got to go see what the hype's them. about. Um, Hype's what, worth it. It's yeah, real. It's man. real. Okay, so it's, if you... Our if you kill like, review should be indicative alone because that bag, it was it was a OG kill shot template with like viper with though. viper materials yeah. on it. So it was a tiny little viper, and that bag would sneak in anywhere, and it was a money freaking bag. Sasquatch, I think it's a better version of a Surefire. So it's similar to yeah. So. You have the kilt, right? And the one nice thing that they did with the kilt is that you can get it regular or you can get heavy fill. So it's a little bit thicker. Yeah. And I actually ordered another set of kilt just yeah. because I wanted to compare the heavy to the normal yeah, fill. Absolutely. You can tell it's a little bit fuller bag. So I can tell some people like a little bit fuller bag. I get it, 100%. The Sasquatch I have is the same fill as like a, a standard kilt, right? So it is a looser feeling bag. I like the fill that they use. It's small. I want to call it universal, but every once in a while I feel like I feel, feel like a little, a little filler in there. Yeah. Um, but it has got a truly unique slow side material on it. It does. I don't know how to categorize it. I don't know if I want to call it carpet. Um, it's not quite the, carpet. The speed, the speed to me reminds me of Surefire. Of kind of, of I would. Fire. It's like or players. Correct. Kind of right I think it's there. like right in between. It's like a five and a half. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's so not if I had quite a, a, yeah, it's not quite a carpet, but it's definitely a control bag. Now again, I, in human conditions, this material does slow down. It does. So I want to say it's cotton based, but if you feel it though, it doesn't feel it doesn't cotton. feel cotton yeah, though. It feels synthetic, but it plays like a cotton. I think. Based. I mean, just if you look at the the thread of it though, you could tell that that thing's going to absorb moisture. Like, I mean, you could see the fuzz on it. Any time a bag fuzzes, when it's humid out, it's just going to slow down. I mean, it's... it's Correct. Now, the slick side is Viper Slick. Viper, yeah. So, it's just a good pairing. So, we're called... It's like a... Five, let's, let's call it like a five and a nine. Um, it's... Um, if we're comparing this to 724, it's about the same size as the 724 WMD. It's a bigger template bag, um, which is, I think, is smart for them to add... Yeah. Something a little bit bigger compared to the kilt. I agree. Um, the kilt, I get tiny. what they're going for. Yeah, though. I mean, it's a tiny bag, but it meets all the specs. Like, I'm not saying it's like illegal or anything. It meets the specs, but this is it's this the is small. This side is of the pro stamp. This is one of those bags. That I'm telling people that if you do not have this as part of your arsenal and you're looking for something different, this is something worth your money to go spend it on. Hell yeah. This is something that they have releases uh, semi regularly. Uh, if you check out C3 Cornel or C3 Bags, I'll look it up. I'll try to post it in the show notes. I say that, but I won't. Um, <laughs> maybe <laughs> Rob, every time. Maybe Robbie show Green show. is listening to this and they can tag their page on Facebook or something. But um, no, I, I really like it. Um, let's go design first. First okay. of all, I am a huge Sasquatch fan. Yeah. And I'm actually really disappointed that when I was on the Dogcast show, they never asked me my thoughts about Sasquatch. you and I both agree. We're in the same spot. Dude, yeah. like... Sasquatch is out there. Dude, I just... I want to believe so bad. Like, yeah. do I think it's there? I don't know, but I love the Probably thought not, of it. but yeah, exactly. Like, a, a boy can dream. Yeah. Okay? Like, I would love... I want to go squat. I want to go squatch yeah. it. I, like, we would honestly, if we had a free night, we yeah. would just go walk around the yeah. woods. And make some squash calls, because why the hell not? You can yeah. drink and do that. So, so design score. I love the fact that they won front and back with the, the Sasquatch. Yes. Super creative. <laughs> I fucking love that. Um, I, I mean, I'm going to go 93. I just, I love it. I think it's super creative. There's nothing else out there like this. Um, I just, all, just every design aspect is well thought out about it. It still has the arrow, so you can spin the bag. It, it's great. I love it. So I will, I will... My my one knock is the colors, the color scheme that they have on all. That's all probably the bags. could be. Oh, okay. Because like I mean, across like what okay. they're offering. Yeah. They're like they're kind of muted tones, if you yeah. will. So like they don't stick out so much on a board. Now, I think it rains a lot out by where they're from, though. So it might just be like their mood. I, I could see that. Maybe. Now, now, granted, like I have good eyesight, but I could see someone who maybe doesn't have the best, like struggling a little bit. Yeah. And I know it's a reach, but I'm still going to 92. Because <laughs> the Sasquatch on it, one, the little, the front side, he looks like a badass Sasquatch. Yeah. And, like, then you flip it over and you see, like, the footprint on his back. Dude, that's just next level gameplay. Like This has been one <laughs> of those. thought of both sides of a bag. That's cool as shit. People keep asking, like, oh, what's in your bag's more backpack? Like, what, you know, like, five or six sets? 
recently when I'm at work and I find myself, I don't have bags to like, I don't need to throw any more to review or I'm not trying to do content for harddrivepush.com. Make sure you check out harddrivepush.com. HDP. For bag reviews, all that stuff. Um, I find myself throwing Sasquatch a lot because I like it. I, honestly, I'm there with you because it's the perfect, to me, it's the perfect merriment of this would be a good I bag for you, me and you. Correct. Yes, exactly. I, how we both throw, where it's like I can, I can see still you control and, I and you throw can flip that thing. I agree. As, yeah. double, as a double team, yeah, I really could. I, I mean, like, and it to me, it's it's got the it's got more fill in it than the friction, so I feel like I throw it a little bit better. People, where the friction and, they, me you problems. hear this a lot. I actually, just, it was just the other day, somebody posted a question like, "I hurt my elbow because I like to throw a softer bag, but my partner likes to throw." Um, you know, something a little bit slower, so I have to really muscle up. What's the good in between? Sasquatch. Yeah, this I would agree. be something right it's in the middle. Um, now, because even that slow side is going to slide for you. Yeah, so. the slow side's going to slow. Now, if you have zero touch, you have the touch of a rapist. Yeah, it's going to slide off the back. Exactly. But yeah. I mean, it doesn't take that. You just have to take a little bit off a carpet throw, and this is going to be right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, and that's what I'm slowly per- learning. Performance score. I'm going to go 89. That's pretty high. Okay. Yeah. That's, I mean, I'm I mean gonna, that's big praise. I'm going to throw it right in there. I'm, I've been in the 80s with all these bags. I'm going to stay. That one's actually going to be my highest of the three. Okay. I'm going to go 87. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I know Warrior's more more my, my speed and go-to because I like throwing carpet, but every time that a bag hung up with the Warrior, the Sasquatch was dropping. So, like... 724. I expect it to be great just because like everything Jared's come out with has yeah, been absolutely. very good. Yeah, he... Sasquatch, we really like Kill. This was a... I actually, I like the Highlander a lot, too. I don't want to say this was like a pleasant surprise. I was just surprised at how, I, I guess, like how unique it was they, and yes. how much I like it. Because, again... They found the, a unique material that The slick works. side, we know, is... it's. Yeah, we've, we've thrown it 100 bags. I mean, it's on, it's on the W... Uh, it's on the 724 bag we just reviewed. Yeah. But the slow side of this is something unique, it's and that's why I like, respect that. It's like a flat corduroy. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> it's like how you, yeah. how you describe it, but yes, I agree with you that like they found a unique material that works very, very well, and like we're huge fans of that. Yeah. We just did Notorious bags with a bunch of unique yeah. materials on it, and yeah, it's uh, it's kind of kind of taken off. So I, I'm excited to see where the Sasquatch lands next season yeah. for the pro level, because I'm expecting to see that thing pop well, up quite so a bit. So give it a little shout out. Len Hyatt and his ba- his partner Greg Kathers. Now I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. I'm pretty sure that's who it is. Uh, they made a good run. They tied for oh, so they're pros too, and they make bags. Ninth. Okay. Seventh. What were they throwing? Ninth. I think. Now I don't know for sure. I think they threw kilts. At okay. least they had been. Um, but they had made they made a great run through the, the FS last yeah. national. So a double. So uh, shout out to Len. Uh, Shout out to Epic Bags, C3, 724, all great stuff. I, we were excited to do all three of these bags reviews. Yeah. Next week we have, um, uh, what do we have? I gave them to you before. Uh, we have what, the the Crazy A, the Dominator. We have the Prodigy bag, oh, and nice. we have one more. I can't remember the one you gave me. The it's Prodigy. Right other room. It's the Prodigy. That's the Prodigy yep. bag? Okay. Yep. So um, all good stuff coming up. and uh, Maybe we'll do the, the control bag. Maybe again. Yeah, maybe because we got the we got the new control bag in, so maybe we'll throw that one in there. We'll see. Wait, what's that? But <laughs> shameless plugs to the rap horn. <laughs> All right, reach us at Instagram and Twitter at Big Ass Pornhole. And Facebook at Big Ass Pornhole Podcast. Thanks again to our sponsors. Visit AirwolfAthletics.com for all your cornhole swag. Use code BIGASP, it'll get you 10% off. And iHeartCornhole.com for the best boards in the biz. If you use code BIGASP10, it'll get you 10% off. Bagsboard.com for the sexiest backpacks and patches in the game. And BlackjackCornhole.com for the sexiest bags around. Code BIGASP can save you 10%. Apple Podcast Reviews, as always, drop those reviews. Five stars are appreciated. Again, do not send me a picture of you just giving us five stars and think you're getting a sticker. You need to write something out for people. Yeah, and honestly, like, can somebody be, like, clever and, like, write us a good review? Because yeah. I've been, like, reading through them and stuff. Some and of them are good. They're, listen, they're okay, but, like... They're all good. We haven't gotten anything recently. Yeah, I want to I don't know if you guys are getting soon. a little comfortable, but we're... we're I'm at, listen, I'm asking you. If you're watching this on YouTube, first of all, subscribe to our YouTube page. And then, second of all, if you're listening to this on Apple, I, Apple Podcasts, just stop after this episode... Just stop, give us five stars, type up a little something, and I'll send you some. Just send me a screenshot. That's all I'm asking. We'll send you some stuff, and honestly, like, 
I want to shout you guys out. So yeah. if you guys come up with it, like something but, funny to say, guess what? We're going to read it live on Justin, the air. Justin McDowell, you sent me this. I'm sending your sticker out. He's got lost in the mail, and then I went on vacation. You sent me a message. I didn't get back to you because I think I was like in the middle of something. Your sticker's on his way. So, Justin McDowell, expect your sticker soon. Yes. Um, okay, be sure to check out harddragpush.com. HDP. Your one-stop shop for all your cornhole content. Bag reviews, um, preview shows, I mean, everything. All right, we got garage bar tours. We have fun random shit videos. This summer, we're going to be getting out a little bit more. Yeah, I've been here, and I've been getting a lot of uh, positive reviews on our golf video that we okay. had, throwing the mini bags on, on the course. So go check that out. I mean, we, we, we tried just random stuff with cornhole, and it's, it's fun. Go check out it. I don't know what's in the cards this weekend. I'm hoping to maybe possibly convince the wife to let us go to the Ohio State Championships. My weekend's free, so... I'm Once hoping you get the okay. You tell me. And we'll, I'm hoping we'll I can maybe convince down. her to let me go out in the morning, just so we can go down there, get some content, do yeah. some interviews, do some stuff. Um, but yeah, so harddragpush.com. If you're interested in getting a T-shirt, please message me, Sean Asp on Facebook. Um, we have a few sizes of every size left. It's thirty dollars shipped to your door. We would greatly appreciate the support. We're trying to grow this website into doing something. We put a lot of time into it. So any support you guys can give us, we'd greatly appreciate. It. Absolutely. Can you do this? My voice is like... I got you. All right, so July 31st, mark your calendars, all right? Hang on, let me see if I can pull this guy up here. Boom. All right. So, at 3 p.m., the second annual, is it Sarsian? Sarsion. Sarsion. I guess. (laughs) Ford of Waynesburg Cornhole Tournament is happening. It's during the East Sparta homecoming. The event is being held in East Sparta, Ohio, just outside of Canton. Uh, $50 a team, no two advanced level pros playing together or advanced level players playing together. So it makes for just a fun tournament, people. All right, but like, it's good payouts. So. Exactly, great payouts. So uh, 1100 in total payouts for, uh, for people just showing up. So if you call or message Carl Rausch on Facebook, um, or you can contact us if you need help registering for the event. Uh, we can certainly point you in the right direction. So just hit us up. We'll, we'll tell you where it's at. Again, it's, it's just outside of Canton, Ohio. Um, so all of you, like, Pennsylvanians out there, maybe even, like, northern Michi- Michigan guys, like, or mid-Michigan yeah. to lower Michigan. Okay, July 31st. I mean, it's, it's going to be a great tournament. We're going to be there. We're going to, you know, say what's up. And, uh... Maybe you'll hear us on a little broadcasting of, yeah. or whatnot. Um, All goes to plan. So um, you can even show up the day of the event and register. So that's a positive as well. But um, it's all for it's all for a great cause. Um, just trying to just trying to grow this game, man. Um, the events rain or shine. There's a shit ton of raffle items going on too. So you got stuff from Reynolds bags, Dragon bags, local bags, BG and. Or maybe even hard drag push stuff's gonna be done. HDP, what's Who up? Who knows? Hell yeah! So, uh, yeah, give it. How about, how about this? I'm gonna go bigger. Give it a thought. I'm gonna go bigger. Go home. How about this? How about if ten people sign up for this tournament, all right? And they say and they tell. So you message us or Carl Rauch, and you're gonna go to this tournament. You pay the fifty bucks. If we get ten teams signed up and they say that we referred them to it. I'm gonna. I'll do. I'll. I'll donate a set of the 724 bags to the for a giveaway okay. to one of those. To one of those first ten Which teams. Which gonna give up? up? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But See, uh, seriously, to one of those first ten teams to sign up for this event, I'll give up a set of my 724 bags. Yeah. So just make sure you message us too. Yeah. And uh, let us know that you. Or just tell Carl that. Time. Yeah. Tell Carl that you heard from us, or message us. We'll get you in contact with Carl. Let's do it that way. Yeah, that sounds good. So. Hey, if you're one of the first ten to to register and mention Big Asp, tell Carl Roush that you're expecting some goddamn seven two four bags, and uh, he'll let us know, and we'll we'll throw you in a, a little drawing real quick. I mean, why not? If you have had your head in the sand, perhaps you haven't heard about it, but the biggest tournament, cornhole tournament in Iowa, is called the Clash. The Clash. It's happening at the end of September, September twenty second, twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty third, twenty fourth, somewhere right around there. 
Um, um, it's in Cedar well, Rapids, Iowa. He's had like 90-something teams paid out. Uh, 100. 100 teams 100 paid teams. Out. So he's we're capping getting, it at 148? I think so, yeah. So we're, we're getting close, people, so... Go in. Don't go in wait. Class, like this is wait. not an event that yeah, you can I get mean, away. You, you got to go and just pay for it. It's going to be well worth it. I went to it last year. It is a blast. You're going to have big ask. You're going to have dog cast. You're going to have um, some guy. I think he makes jerseys. Um, you're going to have Ben from Score Holio. Was that the? Is that the jersey guy? Uh, maybe. I don't, All right. I can't remember. Um, you're going to have a whole bunch of guys. So just come out, enjoy us. Ha- you know, seriously, have a good time. Have a few beers with us. We're I'm I'm pumped for it. I can't wait. Hell yeah. It's a weekend away. So. Uh, the Clash. Reach out to Reggie Wrights on Facebook, or again, hit us up. We can send you in the right direction. Yep. All right. That was it. I think that's I think that's a quality episode. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if I would have been able to get through an interview with my voice. Your it's, voice it's fading is, fast. It's fading fast. Man, so I apologize. So. I was trying to battle through it. Um, I even didn't even drink that much because I felt like every time I took a sip, it was getting worse. And See, I, I beg to differ. I think it really would have loosened the... The vocal cords, Hopefully it doesn't but, sound as bad as I think it sounds, but No, you're fine. You're fine. Right. I would have told you. If like you sound like shit, go oh, ahead, I got well, thank it. You. Thank <laughs> you. Um but again, uh dropping this Thursday. Bad world. Bad world. Party time. Be on the lookout on Facebook. Uh, again, great uh clothing, merch, uh clothes for your girl, anything I, you want. I will I will say that it is the comfortable like the most comfortable shirt I've gotten for Cornhole to date. And I look trim in it, which, I mean, it's hard for big-ass to look even flexing. sexy I'm not even in a flexing fucking this. shirt. So, yeah, uh, get yourself some fucking bag rolled. It drops on this Thursday. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, next week we have um, – I'm just going to throw it out there, so maybe it kind of puts pressure on it for, for him to for sure confirm. Um, yeah, I think it does, yeah. So next week we have lined up um, – a guest I've wanted to have on have on for a while. Um, we had talked back and forth the last few weeks, just kind of uh, for some various reasons, which I'll bring up. But uh, we have, uh, if all goes to plan, Noah Wooten is going to be our guest next week, which I'm very excited for. He's a kind of a polarizing player, perhaps the most popular player in the ACL. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I, I hear great things about him. I've only had, like, a five-second conversation with him. Yeah, so I'm excited and, to talk to him and interview yeah. him and, uh, hopefully, if all goes well, Noah Wooten will join us next week, and then uh, we'll roll from there. Absolutely. It's all right. exciting well, things. As always, we hope you throw it straight, and it's nothing but four baggers from here on out. Cornhole it. Later. <laughs>